Hey guys, um, welcome to today's tutorial, um, career challenge tutorial. We will be looking at one of the most, um, one of the very things that we experience on a day-to-day -day basis as software developers or data engineers or whichever position or role that we carry. Um, even entrepreneurship every single day, it's, your job to do problem solving and it could come in different ways. Um, yeah, it always comes in different ways. So every single day as a software developer, you're thinking about the best ways to solve a particular problem or how to approach a particular pro problem. Or if you're building a solution, how exactly you are going to solve problems there. Uh, yeah, so under this, we're going to just look at one framework this time. And I think it's, yeah, it's the global framework. But yeah, like I mentioned, every day we encounter problems and it could be personal or just related to work. Uh, but the mentality or, yeah, the mentality or the mindset to have whenever we're experiencing problem is to take it as an opportunity to uh, create solutions. So Peter said that problems are merely solutions waiting to be found. So basically what problem solving involves is what, um, just what steps to take for you to overcome different obstacles. Um, yeah, so I would, take an example of a meat producer. Um, so someone who has a company that um, collects meat from different uh, suppliers and then they have a dis they have different distributions outlets in um, yeah different distribution that outlets in different parts of the town and then you've noticed over time so some of the problems that could arise from such an organization is uh, you could have some days when you don't have um, when you don't have supply. Um, you could have some 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 place some refrigerator broke and meat isn't stored as much. You could be experiencing uh, this week or in the past month we've been making so many losses, so you have to find out where exactly do these losses come from and how how do you solve them. Um, that's just one example of someone in business. But if we think about uh, you as developers, I know you, ex you, you write code a lot and you, there are very many different solutions, let's say um, algorithms that you can use to solve a particular problem. So as a problem so as a good problem solver, your work is to find out which which model should I use best, which one fits the need of my clients or my problem or my solution. Um, so that's just the general view of problem solving. So with this, it will require you to think very critically and broadly. It will require you to, to start expressing or showing your creativity. And also, how can you adapt to changing situations? So if you try the first thing and it doesn't work, how, how fast can you adapt instead of staying in the same position and thinking about how you did this wrong instead of adapting to the new situations. So it's very important that we train our muscles, our brain muscles to be problem solvers, to always think positive about um, having a problem in terms of um, thinking about a solution instead of thinking about the problem itself. Um, yeah, so there's a few importances of uh, problem solving is you, if you have, if you use the right framework of problem solving, you get to make better decisions, uh, which leads to better outcome. And if you, if, if you're someone who enjoys 
I know some people do love enjoy or enjoy creative thinking and developing solutions because then you feel accomplished and it makes you more motivated to adapt um, or to just be a problem solver. Um, and also, yeah, adaptability is, um, if you look at a business that operates on every, every single day and you have different problems, how exactly can you, uh, you never know where the problem today will be, but you have to be very adaptable. Um, yeah, it's making, solving more problems will make you more adaptable to handle the new challenges that come your way. And another thing is it's always best or properly done if on a team, because then you get to think outside of the box, outside of what your brain is thinking, and you get to hear different people's ideas and yeah, just get to solve a problem. So the very basic and regular framework that can be used is if you approach a problem methodically. So you think about, so instead of just thinking, um, yeah, so you have to structure your problem. So number one is to define the problem, understand exactly what the problem is, analyze the problem very well. And then think about different solutions and then choose the best and then immediately act. I, I know we remember last week when we were talking about decision making, we looked at the decision making matrix from um, from Jeff Bezos. And what we saw is if you're making decisions, it's best if you make them fast and um, make, make decisions very fast and that also rhymes with this so after you choose a solution instead of waiting for a long time you have to act on it immediately and yeah and then implement it uh so for the first one let's look at in depth of defining the problem so um the first thing is to so you have to take some time and think about um how exactly you're going to solve this problem if you don't really think about it chances are you're not going to solve the problem um, much faster. So the first thing is to identify exactly which issue you're facing, what the problem is, and be very clear and specific. So under defining and structuring problems, we could we, we could think of, of something like an issue tree. So I don't know if you've had an if you've heard of an issue tree before, but it's basically trying to understand the root cause of an image of um i'm just trying to look for a picture that i can share just a minute so when defining and structuring your your problems oh yeah here's an example this is a good example. Yeah, so for this is an article by McKinsey. Um, if we look at this, so this is an example of an issue tree. So you have the problem that you're facing. So let's let's go back to the meat um, meat company. So you are ex with the problem. So let's say an example of a problem that you're facing is um, you're making losses. So the, if the problem is making losses, there could be very many things that you could think of um, to be causing the losses. So then you start to draft the different issue. What could be issue number one? Um, is it because our selling price is a bit low? Is it that where issue number two could be is our cost of acquisition of meat a bit low um, or high? And issue number three, are we overpaying people? Are people, uh, is there any malfunction in the, in the storage facilities? Are we having some uh, things going to waste? And in each and every one of them, 
there should be like a sub issue so at the end of it all you'll come and find out that you'll rule out the you'll rule out the noise and be and get to really understand exact so you'll get to under you'll get to solve the problem individually so not just um not just so you can't really solve the problem on making losses alone on its own so instead you have to look at the very specific issue and then when solving the problem you approach each and every issue um approach each and every issue separately and find solutions to each and every issue so that's on defining uh that's on defining a problem um so you have to clearly get to the root cause understand properly structure your problem and then the next one would be to analyze the causes so uh once we oh sorry i'm trying the wrong thing again yeah so the next step is once you've already understood where exactly the root cause is then oh once you've already structured the once you've already understood the problem that you're solving or the the very many issues that contribute to the big problem then you get to identify the causes. So if it's if one of the sub issue that you found was um, maybe the refrigerator, a lot of meat goes bad and then it's thrown out and you don't make sales, then you have to then you have to think about exactly what could be the root causes. Is it because the machines that you're using are too old and inefficient, or is it because um, maybe there's a lot of power outages and sometimes your meat don't doesn't get refrigerated very well is it a power issue is it um is it also could it could be something like um maybe it's just not well maintained it's a bit dirty and it's it could not be a problem with a machine so it could be um the people handling it maybe they're not uh ensuring like high standards of cleanliness so you have to get to the root cause of the problem um that contributes to the issue so once you've identified the issue you then uh identify brainstorm a couple many many decisions many solutions that you think could um could could yeah many solutions that you think could solve the problem so i know every human has their own brain and the solutions that you come up with will be very different from your team's solution so as long as it solves the problem it's good to brainstorm solutions with a team so you you're not limited your vision is kind of expanded because you're you're thinking about other people's ideas as well um so it's good to brainstorm proper solutions that are cost effective uh yeah and also when looking yeah uh just propose uh so uh yeah one thing here on this stage so i, I think i was rushing to the next stage earlier so when brainstorming solutions you don't have to limit yourself. So even if it means that solving the specific problem could cost you like 50 million US dollars, which doesn't make sense, just add it also to the potential solutions that could solve your problem. So don't limit yourself here. Uh, think about anything and anything or anyone that could solve the problem and then just list it down. And then once you have um once you've identified oh, I'm missing one slide yeah yeah so once you've identified the solution so we're here um so we're here on the identify we've covered identify many solutions so don't limit yourself at this stage then we have the stage where you have to choose solution and this is where you use different um different tools, for example, prioritization techniques. This is where you 
you eliminate things like cost, uh, this would not be efficient, this would not be reliable, this would take too much work, this would not make sense, this is going to affect um, humans, so if you're going to lay some people off, it's going to affect people, so you have to eliminate all, all the solutions that don't make sense and then choose the solution that you're going to go with. Um, so if it was the refrigerator is old and isn't inefficient, does it make sense for you to buy a new one? Is it uh, if your costs? So, and remember, since we had identified, so remember how we structured the different problems on an issue tree. Um, so if you have all those different uh, I, all those different problems. When solving when solving the problems, you have to handle them individually, unless they kind of depend on each other. You have to handle them individually. So have different solutions for different things. So once you choose your solution, you can then immediately start acting on it and then learn from it. So. Uh, sometimes you might choose a solution that doesn't really work or some things you didn't see beforehand. Then you can learn from it and then, uh, yeah, so once you implement it, you can learn and learn from it and then evaluate again after. So, um, yeah, once you already implement a solution, just look at how it works, uh, implement it, get feedback, uh, see if your sales are coming back up and then evaluate the uh, solution that you made. If you feel like the solution did really work, um, you can always go back to other solutions or other um, solutions. And one thing with problem solving is it's always good whenever you're identifying, whenever you're analyzing the problems or even just choosing the solutions, um, you can't be a boss at your office uh, making, uh, analyzing problems or identifying the solutions without actually being in the field. So the people who understand how the processes work better are the ones you should talk to and are the ones you should also involve in this analysis problem, um, in this when analyzing the problems and identifying the solutions because they are the ones who do the work. Uh, so it's much better to also hear their views, like what, what do you think could help to improve uh, efficiency in this uh, industry and things like that. So yeah, always remember that. Don't solve the problems in an office, go straight to uh, the source and understand and get to understand the problem very well. Uh, so just some general tips to improve your problem solving skills. Uh, it's always good to think outside of the box and explore also unconventional solutions. I think there was a time we talked about some bias in decision making. So sometimes if you, uh, sometimes you can, so yeah, your mind has a bias to things or rules that have already been made before. So it's encouraged to think outside of the box if it helps your solution. Um, and then it's also good to get advice from experienced people, from mentors, people who've been in the industry before, seek their input and perspectives and they can help, they can really give uh, proper ideas on how to solve problems. The other thing would be to analyze problems systematically and objectively. So. Um, so if we had not really gone through the whole process of identifying the issues that arise and solving the problems for each, we would have just sat in the office and said, oh, we're, we're experiencing so much losses um, this month. Can we add the prices that we're selling and try to make a better deal and acquire these goods at a very low price. So that if you that could be one of the solutions that you could think about without really thinking that even if we even if you increase the production, if you increase the production and also increase the selling price, you're still going to have a lot of losses because maybe your machine is not really working well. Um, and that could mean so much waste. So it's good to analyze problems very systematically. If possible, use this uh, framework that we've provided today. And yeah, consider also different perspectives and 
implications that could come from it. And then always learn from failure. Uh, don't be afraid to fail. It happens to the best of us and to most um, CEOs who, like for example, Jeff Bezos and everyone, uh, everyone has failed before. So learn from it. Don't be ashamed of failure. Um, try as much not, not to fail, not encouraging you to fail, but try as much to learn from failure and use it as an opportunity for growth and learning instead of, yeah, yeah, just learn from failure and use it as an opportunity for you to grow and make better decisions in future. Um, so I want us to do a small exercise here and I would like, uh, the goal for this is to just see how different people think, how different people approach problems. And if you look at, if you look through the scenario, you might see that uh, one person could have a different way of solving the situation and you'd also be impressed by the other person's ideas. Oh, I had not thought of that, but I think it would be nice if we solve it in this way. So I want us to do the small exercise. Um, uh, so if you look at your screen, so imagine a scenario where you're all a team of managers uh, of KFC. I hope you, I hope you know KFC, the food the restaurant chain that sells um, food, um, yeah, fast foods, and they have a big chain. Uh, and yeah, it's known for its delicious fast food dishes. So you find out that the entire day's delivery of potato fries had gone bad. So how would you solve this problem? Uh, things to remember, you have, you're expecting a lot of orders that day. Since it's KFC, they're always having customers every single day. So you have an option to telling everyone, oh, sorry, we don't have fries today, but that's what it's really known for. So it's known for having its best fries. So are you going to sell the bad fries <laughs> themselves as a manager? I know different managers would uh, work differently. So one would tell the people oh we can't serve fries today the other one would tell um the other ones would just serve bad potato fries so if it were you how would you handle the situations i'd like to hear your views if possible please unmute and yeah let's have a proper discussion between us anyone wants to go first Okay, um, since no one, um, Emmanuel, do you wanna unmute and tell us how you would handle the situation? The Ficado, do you wanna try? Feel free to also leave it on the chat. Um, yourself, Nebiu, Tizazu, Elias, do you guys want to try? Okay, um, it's okay, you can just type Amano. Same as everyone else who can speak, please leave your ideas on the chat. So another thing you could also consider is identify the priorities or the needs of the business. So every single day it has to serve fries. So if one if one supplier brought by potato fries, is it how fast and quick can you get um, your team to go get better potato fries? And you also know that sometimes um, 
KFC. The fries are not, they're not bought locally, they're always imported. I have no idea why. Uh, but can is it, would you think about getting other produce locally so you can be able to satisfy your customers' needs or how are you going to do it? And also, yeah, so we save on time. I'm going to, I'm hoping that you've all read and understood the scenario. So I'll be waiting. You will make new potato fries and give them freely to the customers for an hour. <laughs> okay, this is an interesting one. Um, where will you source your new potato fries, considering everything you have in stock is gone bad? So you have to make calls to different suppliers to supply on time. And also giving out fries for an hour. How much losses will the business make? Or do you prefer to satisfy your customer first and the business later? <laughs> immediate damage control that's interesting so yes communicating with customers is very important um okay you can tell the customers that no fries are there today okay um so communication is very good to your clients um yeah the second part it can be an option uh you'll make you'll make some sales you'll make some losses but yeah, it's, it is what it is. And then review and prevent future issues. That's, that's good. Uh, so I'd like to hear more of your ideas. They're very interesting. Um, so please leave them on the chat while we have a look at today's exercise. So the exercise is, um, I know you're all learning how to code, how to build, softwares and in future you might find yourself as a product manager or a project manager or some of you already are um so given a scenario of a gaming startup that has been struggling with customer retention and also a declining engage user engagement if you are the maybe the ceo or a yeah, the CEO definitely their goal is to solve problems and to make sure that you're getting many users and you're getting more sales. So you as the, the, they've identified the problem, um, the root cause of the problem, and they found the following reasons. So there could be misleading advertising. So you've really um, done a lot of marketing for a product that's not even ready yet. So have you wasted a lot of money there instead of, um, instead, yeah, have you wasted a lot of money there instead of coming, uh, instead of using that, those funds to build a proper app uh, because, yeah, to build a proper app so you can retain your customers. Um, yeah, so the other thing, Yeah, so uh, imagine sending out an app that when people, a lot of people, uh, the marketing is very good, the graphics look very good, but when you download the app itself, it has very, very bad features and that makes so many people delete the app immediately. So you see you've wasted, you've gained a lot of traction from marketing, but when clients come to see the actual product they're very disappointed and they leave so you're making losses you're not retaining your customers so if you were in such a situation how would you handle this problem um yeah so there are so the tasks uh, will just be structured on how exactly would you like to solve the problem and then please provide your answers uh yeah as a report and yeah i hope this will be interesting for you
Yeah, finding, I'm seeing alias is uh, finding the root cause of the issues to ensure it doesn't happen very well. And I think you can also make use of the issue tree to find out which uh, exact problem you're experiencing. Um, yeah, thanks. Your ideas are great. And yeah, like I said, every manager would handle the situation differently because they're in charge. And that's what managers do. So yeah, I hope you've had an interesting session today. Thank you guys for being here. Uh, we can end the session and I hope you all have an amazing day afterwards. And yeah, may it be very productive and enjoy your evening and also your weekend. So bye everyone, all the best and yeah.